I think it's a negotiation, and uh, our president is uh, a negotiator, and he likes to do it in public sometimes. I think what Mnuchin said was consistent, actually, with what Lighthizer said. It was sort of two sides of the same coin. Secretary Mnuchin saying, you know, we've got a breakthrough here. They've agreed to buy more U.S. products, including energy products, agriculture products. And Secretary uh, Mnuchin was more positive than Ambassador Lighthizer, the U.S. trade representative, said, yes, but we've got to verify all this. And, and of course, that's that's required, but it doesn't mean that they aren't making progress. So I think it was positive, and, uh, you know, I think it's moving in the right direction. There was new news this morning, as I understand, about car tariffs as well, that the Chinese are willing to lower the tariffs on the wholesale price uh, percentage of automobiles going to China. So there's there's some positive indications. But he, in the, uh, what we saw yesterday, the president's comments, squarely saying that something changed in the second meeting between North Korea and China, and here we are in the middle of a trade dispute with China. I mean, is, is the president implying that President Xi uh, is tying the trade talks to the kind of pressure he exerts on North Korea? And, and, and uh, I, I don't see how it couldn't be related. And, and it's bizarre uh, that, you know, nuclear Armageddon and, you know, tariffs are, are being discussed in the same context. Yeah, I, I guess that's uh, real politics, they, they call it. But we ought to separate the two. I mean, this is a long-term opportunity for us to adjust our trade relationship with China. And it's not so much about the deficit for me, Joe. It's, it's about the fact that there is an imbalance. Uh, there is not a level playing field in terms of the subsidies, in terms of selling below their costs. China is not playing by the rules in terms of opening their market, you know, allowing U.S. companies to have 100 percent ownership of certain industry sectors. Uh, and obviously, the IP issue, and they are stealing intellectual property. There's no question about it. So there's some things that have to be resolved. Uh, and this needs to be done over a period of time with verification. And you the other issue is... straight on ZTE, because here it comes. Yeah, uh, no, the, uh, the question is, you know, whether you're comfortable with uh, using ZTE as a chess piece in this no, game. No, no, I'm, I'm not. And I guess that's the point, is that we need to keep the national security issues on one side and the trade issues on another, understanding that I'm sure that, you know, the Chinese leadership and, and, uh, and, and President Trump's negotiators are talking about other issues as they come up. But this is a trade discussion that ought to be done separately and on its merits. And I think it's actually in the interest of China long term as well. And that point the president has made is that they're a mature trading partner now, a huge trading partner, and, and they ought to live by the rules that Have the others do. Have you made that position clear to the Trump administration that they, that, that they should take ZTE? Are you suggesting they take ZTE off the table? Well, I'm saying they shouldn't, they shouldn't conflate the two. You know, they're, they're, they're very different. We've got to be sure that our national security is not compromised by having ZTE issues here with regard to telecommunications, which the president's intelligence officials are saying is a concern. Uh, and by the same token, we've got to resolve these trade issues, and they ought to be kept separate. And, and, your, and your sense is they are being kept separate or they're not? Well, I, I think the, the people that are negotiating on this, uh, Bob Lighthizer, the U.S. Trade Representative, uh, Secretary Mnuchin, uh, are, uh, you know, Larry Kudlow, are not focused on the national security issue. They're focused on the trade issue. The, um, I, guess, I mean, NAFTA, the, the, the uh, people that are, are, that want to criticize the administration say that it really mugged, mucked this up, that it's not, uh, they, that there's a chance to do it and it, it's passed and at best you get a... I don't know, some type of skinny NAFTA now? As, uh, did we get too focused on China? How does this play out, the NAFTA deal? Well, we'll see. I mean, we had hoped something could be resolved uh, about this time frame because by that uh, we'd be able to take it up in the lame duck session of Congress. Uh, my view, as you know, Joe, and I've talked about this before in the show, is we've got a lot of balls in the air. I think too many right now in terms of trade. I think you need to focus on, on one issue at a time, in effect. And we've got the 232 issue with the steel tariffs. We've got what's going on with 301 with China. And we've got, um, obviously, NAFTA negotiations that are coming to a serious point given the elections in Mexico and what's going on here uh, in terms of our, our calendar. So it's a lot to do at once. And I, I do think we're making progress in all areas, but uh, you know, it's, it's better to, I think, have a little more focus and I'd have so many balls in the air at once. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.